Hi, and welcome to another in the ARM What Is program series. In each episode, we dive into a tech topic to give you insight and perspective into some of today's hottest design trends. I'm Brian Fuller, Editor-in-Chief at ARM, and today we're going to find out what is an SOC, or to spell it out, System on Chip. And to help us with that, I want to introduce Richard Grissenthwaite, who is Senior Vice President, Chief Architect, and Fellow at ARM. And when he's not helping us understand what is an SOC, he enjoys hiking the West Highland Way in Scotland, which took him seven days. Welcome, Richard. Let's dive right in. So what is an SOC? Well, I think you said it yourself uh, at the start there, Brian. An SOC is a system on a chip, and it was a term that came into currency when the amount of inter- stuff you could integrate onto a single piece of silicon got to the point that you didn't need to put a series of discrete chips onto a board. And this really started on, on the smaller end of, of things in the sort of microcontroller space where you had a relatively um, simple processor and were able to put memory and some peripherals around it onto a single piece of silicon. And as, the, um, as Moore's law has continued to give us more transistors, we're able to integrate more things on a piece of silicon. So bigger and bigger systems are capable of uh, being built as as the entire system on an SOC rather than a big board with, with your GPUs separate or your uh, memory controllers separate. It all becomes onto a single piece of SOC. Uh, and so we saw this in particular in the case of ARM, we, we saw the mobile space being big users of SOCs. And we've seen more and more functionality come onto that as our phones have become more and more capable with the whole smartphone revolution. And now for even big infrastructure uh, computers such as the uh, Neoverse N1, which um, is going into things like the Graviton uh, G2 from AWS, uh, those sort of systems are using SOCs rather than a um, collection of discrete components on a board. So you, you mentioned this growing functionality that design teams are putting onto SOCs. Is there, is there any limit to that functionality? Or to put it another way, is there more interesting functionality that's coming in the next couple of years? Well, I, I think it is just a question of increasing integration as the sizes of transistors keep on getting smaller as we, we go down. We're at you know, five and three nanometer around about now, and we see that continuing on for a little bit more, then um, you're able to cram more and more functionality onto that. We're already seeing, you know, an order of 100 CPUs now on a single SOC, which was an incomprehensible amount if you go back 20 years ago. Nobody would imagine being able to put anything like that level of functionality on there. Um, So it really comes down to the size of transistors as to limits it, but we're now talking about very, very big systems that will fit onto a single SOC. So what are some of the design considerations that would prompt a design team to choose an SOC versus say buying an off the shelf chip? Well, a big part of it is the financial model here. Um, Clearly the design and fabrication of an SOC is is an expensive thing to do because you've got to create masks and um, run wafers and do all of that, but once you've spent that upfront cost, then the cost of the end product can be um, a lot cheaper per unit than assembling a, a list of uh, different components. And it can be completely customized to what you want. So it's really not so much a design consideration as just pure economics. If you expect a large run of um, your design and you want to be very specific to what you're doing, that you can justify the expense, the upfront NRE of building an SOC, then it's the right direction to go in because you get exactly what you want and you're able to have precisely that functionality at a lower cost per unit um, once you've amortized that initial cost. So are SOCs used in a limited number of applications or are they more broadly applicable? Well, I think kind of the story I was telling uh, at the start of this is what we've seen is initially, if you went back 20 years ago, people would have said, oh, SOCs, you know, they're only usable for relatively small, simple computers. Um, If you mention, imagine the mobile phone before we had um, 
uh, before we had smartphones, when they were you know, relatively simple uh, computing devices. No one would imagine putting an entire server onto an SOC at that point, because it really didn't make sense in, in terms of the amount of integration we're able to achieve. What has happened is, as we've been able to achieve more integration onto a single chip, and as we get also sort of 3D uh, effects where you're able to put multiple chiplets together onto um, a single package, then you end up being able to pretty much to solve every problem. And this is why even the, the big uh, infrastructure solutions such as the Graviton G2 are moving in this OC direction. And in many ways, this is just where all computing is going to go, is they're going to be made out of SOCs based around ARM. And that's actually a big part of ARM's advantages, but by being a, compo a component supplier to um, people who want to build SOCs, they're able to build precisely the SOC they want. So we see this as a really important market going forward. Well, thank you, Richard. That was a fantastic explanation of SOCs. Now, check out all our other What Is episodes here and be sure to subscribe to this channel because we'll be adding more as the year progresses. Thanks for listening. Thank you.